vote. I'm the chair of the budget committee. Um, before we open the hearing, I'd like to pledge allegiance. So if you all stand and thank you all. Any questions about the process? 
process. Um, happy to answer. And without that, Suzanne. Okay, with that, I will um, yield the floor to Emily Leach, who will uh, introduce the presenters to the floor. All right, thank you all for coming today. Um, uh, this morning, uh, we will have a presentation for you on the 2020-2021 budget uh, for the District of Rollinsburg, uh, the School District of Rollinsburg, which includes Rollinsburg Grade School, Marshall Middle School, and Marshall High School. Um, that will be uh, presented by our superintendent, Dr. Robert Lippinoff. Um, so I will introduce him and let him be cool. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. We've got a brief PowerPoint that will, will walk us through uh, all of our one articles, the budget specifically, and, and detail out some of the changes in the budget and the highlight. Uh, how's that, Katie? All right, so we'll go through the entire presentation and then be happy to take any clarifying questions that people may have. Um, the, the budget this year is uh, $5,719,214. Uh, and then you can see that if that article doesn't pass, that the default budget is $5,635,723, which is a difference of $83,491. So I'll talk to each of those numbers in detail as we go through the highlights of the, of the presentation. Now as for the budget highlights, the revenues this year, we do have seen a uh, decrease in estimated revenue. Uh, which pre presents a bit of a challenge. The, the decrease of 149,000. Uh, there was a, a 97,000 dollar transfer from capital reserve that was from the foreign articles for last year. Uh, the state adequacy money is is uh, shows a decrease of 52,000 dollars and with a net decrease of 149,735. So there is a slight decrease in, in revenues there. On the expenditure side for the proposed budget. Uh, you'll see that it is uh, $19,000 uh, more than last year, uh, or a 0.34%. So it's a slight increase, um, but minimal. Uh, which brings the net budget $168,000 increase if you, if you look at the net on expenditures as well as the, the slight loss of revenue there as well. On the next slide, we put down contractual obligations. What, what we try to show in this is the uh, amount of our budget that is, uh, I'll say, inflexible. Uh, with the tuition contracts that we have, the salaries, the negotiated collective bargaining agreements, the benefits that are attached to that, and the contracted services, you can see that, that upwards of 97% of the budget is, is pretty much set. So when we try to manage a budget, uh, realistically, there's that 3% that, that we have to work with, and then from that 3%, obviously, we can't zero out textbooks and, and supplies and things. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a tight budget with, with very little um, flexibility, so it presents some challenges managing it. But we think we've done a, a pretty good job with that. Moving on to regular education, uh, that, <coughs> excuse me. That particular line, you can see that the budget is, amount is down $51,000. Uh, some highlights of that area are that we've added one day a week for physical education to increase the movement opportunities for, for our students throughout the day. Um, throughout this budget, you will see in different line items our, our benefits uh, for health. Our health increase was 4.5%, uh, which we were actually pleased about. We've seen double-digit increases at times in the past, so 4.5% is, is uh, good news. Uh, the dental increase for 3.9%, and you can also see the tuition uh, to Marshwick for the middle school and the high school and their per pupil as well. What we've done is taken the projection of the enrollment of the per pupil and the number of students that we have and projected that out and adjusted it as we, we go to students that may move in or move out of the district. So it, again, it's a, a snapshot in time and trying to get that as, as close as possible with that. 
The next function is special education. You can see that there is an increase of $48,000, almost $49,000 in special education. Uh, again, this is a snapshot in time of the special ed students that we have, trying to predict the services that they will need, and these are all mandated services. Uh, so we try to get that as, as close as possible. And again, some highlights of that, the medical and dental, you'll see that'll be a recurring thing theme throughout the budget. Uh, and the special ed tuition, uh, there is a slight increase in there as well. Uh, but again, that is, that is mostly on needs of students. That as, as students age out and get in 12th grade, obviously that will come off the budget. And as students come in with, with needs, then we need to budget for that as well. Co-curricular is fairly static. Uh, you'll see a decrease of about $1,000 in there. We've looked at, or I should say, principal uh, has looked at uh, the intramurals and the needs and what's actually happening and the time available for students and the offerings for students. And he felt that a, a $1,000 reduction in, in that would, would uh, be accurate to what's actually happening. The attendance contracted, uh, that is for any kind of truancy or investigation and investigative issues that may arise. We don't usually have many, but occasionally there's some mileage that we need to pay for or things like that. Um, so we kept that at $500. Guidance services, again, has stayed fairly static. You'll find that throughout the budget there are a lot of lines that we try to maintain as closely as possible. Looking for reductions, obviously, um, but when we needed an increase, keeping it at a very minimal increase. Nursing services, same story. It's, it's fairly static as we move through here. Uh, there has been some uh, nursing equipment in the maintenance agreement that that uh, needed to be adjusted for, but again, minimal increases of seven hundred dollars. Speech services, uh, what we try to do with speech services, again, this is based on need. Uh, it, it, the, the students that test uh, into needing needs of, of speech services, that's where this line takes care of. Uh, and you can see that there were some benefit changes which caused for a, a slight decrease in the area of speech services. PTOT and adaptive PE. Uh, another reduction of $2,500. This is basically in the adaptive PE line. Uh, I think it was two, two or three years ago, there was approximately fifteen dollars to $20,000 in that area. Uh, the need was not necessarily there the last couple of years, and we've adjusted that accordingly to show a continual decrease, and we'll, we feel comfortable that we can meet all those needs with a reduction in that area of $2,500. Testing services, um, that, that's to uh, test students and identify any specific needs that they may have. You can see that our, our budget we feel is adequate, so we're, we're not going to be increasing that area this year. As far as library and services, um, there is a $16,000 um, decrease in that area. And again, as we go through this, you'll see some slight uh, ongoing for staffing with benefits Sometimes there's a bit of an increase, sometimes there's a decrease. Some of it depends on, on life circumstances. Uh, if somebody gets married, if somebody gets divorced, has children, um, obviously the benefits are going to change. In this particular area, we, we could realize a $16,000 decrease. School board services, uh, there's a slight increase in that area. We've increased to $8,500. Um, the increase is based on a couple of different things. The SAU assessment goes into that area. Uh, also, the increase in school board services, legal services, and secretarial services to meet the needs of, of some of the meetings that we have. And the, the school board is very busy in trying to accomplish a number of their goals. So um, there is a slight increase of $8,500 necessary in those areas. School administration. You can see that it is an increase of $11,000 um, in, in addition to the salary and benefits of non-union staff in, in, in that area. You can see the increase of three additional days for administrative assistant. 
Um, again, the needs and the accountability and the tasks that we're charging people with continue to rise and we needed three additional days to, of support to do that. Um, and also some furniture replacement and, and increase in field trip support along uh, comes in that particular function. Property liability insurance, um, that's just an actual Primax change. Um, that's, a, that's an actual 12514 dollars increase to cover those that particular area. Custodial services, uh, we did have an increase of $12,000. We had slight changes in, in staffing. Uh, we also have an increase of hours uh, of the part-time custodian for additional coverage. You can see that our, our building looks fantastic right now and we want to keep it that way. Uh, there were a number of projects that were done this year, uh, including this floor, the cupola, the grand steps out front, uh, the tiling in both the upstairs and the downstairs, and there's a number of projects that we're going to continue to do to keep this, this building in, in great shape. So this is just one more, uh, the custodial services is just one more avenue to keep this building uh, in top-notch shape. And you'll also see a couple of equipment pieces there, of course one more. Uh, and the remote lift for the backboards in here um, that are also in the budget. Utilities, uh, what we've tried to do with utilities is look at three-year actuals uh, and kind of average them out because we never know what kind of weather we're going to get. And, 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 but we've, uh, we've got a $3,200 increase uh, and some of that was based off the actual uses of oil. Um, and also what we're hearing for a possible or probable increase of water and sewer charges as well with some of the work that the Water and Sewer Commission is, is doing out here. So we thought it responsible to up that a little bit and budget that appropriately at $3,300 increase. The maintenance area, we've been very fortunate to get ahead on some of the projects over the past year and, and we're going to continue to try to do that. Um, and it, we've got a uh, $125,000 increase in that area that we've absorbed with some of the other decreases throughout the budget, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, an increase to ground maintenance uh, and some of the other details of, of things that we're trying to get done, including some magnetic locks uh, and an upgrade throughout the whole building. What that will do is that one of the pieces is to be able to secure this area, so when people are using this area in the evening, these doors would be secure as well as the door down past the bathroom, so it would secure the annex. So this would be almost a standalone area at that point. So uh, we're trying to get that piece done, uh, increase the smoke detectors, uh, as well as ceiling fans in the classroom to help with airflow and, and uh, some of the circulation in the building. So all of those things are, are very exciting to get done. You can see the equipment maintenance area. Uh, we've kept that static for this year. We, we feel that we can get those things that are listed there done for the existing amount in the budget. Um, so that's a, a zero increase. Transportation is under the contract that we have with First Student. I believe this, is, this coming year is the final year of the contract, so we will be putting that out to bid for the following year. Uh, this is a, about a $50,000 increase. Um, and that's just based on contractual agreement offering our, and right now we're, we're getting a uh, pretty good deal with services for uh, not only our transportation here, but to Marshwood as well. So um, we feel pretty pleased about that and we will continue to go out to bid as we work through this next uh, school year to go into the budget process for the following year. Other support services. <coughs> You see you've got a decrease of 72,000. Most of that is from the retirement payouts. We had a number of staff members retire this past year. Um, and that was a contractual agreement of the payouts. Obviously that was a one-time expense, so that comes out of the budget for, for next year. So that's a $72,000 decrease in that particular area. <coughs> Transferred to the food service every year, the food service uh, programs, and this is not uh, unique to Rollinsburg, uh, it's very difficult to cover the expenses in, in any food service program, and the school district is obligated by law to cover any kind of uh, uh, under-expended, or I should say, underfunded um, 
part of the food service. So we're increasing that to $3,000 to $15,000 to cover that expense. So we have to cover that for our budget. So we, we looked back at the last couple of years and, and saw what the actuals were and felt that that was a responsible thing to do to actually put that in the budget. And the transfer to capital reserve, again, this is from your Warren articles that, that were approved last year. Um, it came from no additional taxes, um, but those Warren articles have been filled, and, and that's the $97,000 decrease that you see there. Now, a little bit of uh, information on the default budget. The, the default budget is calculated by the same budget as the previous year increasing it by any contractual obligations, decreasing it by any one-time expenditures. So that's how the, the budget is, um, is taken care of for the default budget. If the, default, if the budget fails and the default budget um, is what is ultimately approved, you'll see the number of things, and I won't lead you, read you the whole list, but those are some things that will come out of the budget. Those are, those are areas that are budgeted that, that are not in the default budget. So, you know, some additional music and in, in, uh, instruments, physical education teachers, some grounds, maintenance, the water pipe locust street project, uh, which is 40, we budgeted $40,000 for, for that particular piece. Uh, so all of those things would come out of the budget and should they be necessary next year, then we would have to find that money somewhere uh, in the existing budget out of that 3% that I showed you. Um, which means it would come out of basically Rollins Free Grade School. <laughs> Other proposed Warren articles? <coughs> Article 6 um, is the collective bargaining agreement for the teachers. Um, and you'll see on the following slide that that is a $62,343,000 uh, Warren article. What uh, accounts for that? There was a number of language changes that were agreed on, and they were basically uh, clarifying language changes in the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, it's a 2% salary increase for teachers, a 75 cent increase for paraprofessionals, which was really a goal of the of school board to try to slowly increase the paraprofessional salaries. Uh, and there were, was no uh, adjustment in uh, health insurance or, or other savings, so it was a $62,343,000 uh, warrant. Article 7 is uh, for your reg regular educational expendable trust program, and again this is regular education tuition. You tuition students uh, for middle school and high school to Marshwood, and every student that comes in will cost the school district the budget, uh, the, the tuition amount. Uh, so 11,000 and change. Uh, if you have, obviously, five move-ins, that's about $55,000. So uh, what we're trying to do, or what the board is trying to do, is build up this expendable trust so we can budget more closely to the exact number. Uh, and then should we have any move-ins throughout the year after the budget is set, then we would have a capital reserve to take care of that. If we don't have that in place, again, it comes out of your, your uh, other budget, which is basically Rollins for grade school. We would have to cut something to cover that. So that's where this expendable trust is. And this is through no additional taxation. This is only at the end of the year. If there are monies that are unexpended in the budget, then this would be voted into this particular warrant. Article 8, this is the improvement of capital reserve fund for the building improvement should anything uh, be needed in the future, which there is always something needed in the future, uh, whether it's a roof, a boiler, heating and ventilation systems, a lot of those big ticket items that, that it's very difficult to budget in in one particular year, $500,000, $750,000. So this expendable trust is put aside for that. And again, this is no additional taxation. This is only at the end of the year. If there are unexpended funds in the current budget, then this would be another one of those foreign articles that would be loaded as a capital reserve. Article 9 
is for the withdrawal of Rollingsford from SAU 56 uh, and what that would do. We had a withdrawal committee. Actually, we had two withdrawal committees. We had one from Rollingsford and one from Summersworth. They were occurring at the same time. Um, Summersworth has made it clear that they are, are uh, going to pull out of SAU 56 um, halfway through the process. Rollinsford Withdrawal Committee and Summersworth Withdrawal Committee got together um, and both decided that the best interest for Rollinsford would be for, for Rollinsford to withdraw. That way, Rollinsford would have the uh, autonomy to decide what those services would look like. Ultimately, the best course of action right now is to do a contractual agreement, pull out and to do a contractual agreement with Summersworth to provide the, those services. Um, but it does provide knowledge for the autonomy in the future to decide do they stay there, do they go someplace else in an SAU, do you create your own part-time SAU, it gives you that uh, authority. If this article were to fail, uh, Summersworth has already made it clear that they're going to reactivate their withdrawal committee and proceed with pulling out of SAU 56. If that were to occur, then obviously Rollinsford would be reacting to try to kind of piece together services instead of being proactive in doing that. So the withdrawal committee has recommended that this, and the school board has recommended that this take place, uh, and this is the best course of action. Um, let me just look down my notes quickly to see if I've missed anything. It's going to be, uh, the, the existing contract has already been a contract developed with Rollinsworth and Summersworth for, to provide those services. Uh, it, it has been approved by both school boards uh, and it's going to be operated on the existing formula of calculation right now. So the exact formula that you're using right now to, to provide, uh, to pay for those services, that same formula is going to be utilized moving forward. The only change, in immediate change in, in uh, that particular, if it passes, is that Rollinsford would no longer have a say in the SAU office. So um, the, if there should be a, uh, a hiring of staff, uh, the superintendent, if there were to be other uh, decisions on the building itself, uh, the SAU building itself, uh, the budget itself, um, that you wouldn't have any say in that. But right now, the way it's set up, uh, you have a minority vote in those decisions as it stands now. And this has already been uh, taken to the New Hampshire State Board of Education and approved by the State Board of Education. So, should this pass, the, the plan is that this would go into effect as of July 1st. Uh, and we feel very strongly that it will be a very smooth, seamless transition. Article 10 is uh, to see if we uh, send our grade 6 students to Marshwood. This was, if you remember, there was a petition warrant article, uh, advisory warrant article on last year that, that had passed. <coughs> Um, and, and the school board had committed to looking at all educational <coughs> benefits and pros and cons of most situations, of holding a public hearing uh, for a public forum for feedback, which they, they've conducted this year. Um, and they've looked at all possibilities, and, and the recommendation that I brought forward, as well as the school board, is that uh, you've got a great little school here and to leave your sixth grade as they presently are. Um, but the school board felt that there was a, enough public interest in asking the school board to take a number of steps. So that's why they're bringing forward a warrant article ultimately for the community to decide. Um, the recommendation is that this, they, they do not recommend this article. Uh, there are reasons that uh, the students, both schools are outstanding. Marshwood's great, Rollinsburg's great. Uh, both settings are very good. There is no compelling reason right now to, to send grade six to Marshwood. You've got a wonderful school and a wonderful education here. Uh, in two years, five years, my crystal ball is kind of cloudy, but uh, down the road, if your enrollment increases in space, 
uh, gets tighter and tighter, perhaps you would have to revisit this, and maybe at that particular time it would make sense to send the sixth grade to Marshall. But at this particular time, uh, this is not recommended. Now, on the next sheet, we tried to detail out, give people a little bit more uh, information as to how we arrived at three hundred twenty-six thousand six hundred fifty dollars. And again, that's the that's the estimated cost for next year. Uh, if this were to go into action, uh, it would be approximately, and I say approximately because it's based on enrollment and some other things. Uh, it would be that amount every year. So ten years, three point two million dollars. Uh, you know, it, it would be an ongoing expense. Uh, we took the tuition rate, which is eleven thousand three hundred dollars. Uh, the projected number of students at twenty-seven students. We took the existing students that are in the fifth grade, as well as we know a couple of parents that, that have students that said they would that are not presently in Rollinsburg that would be going to Marshwood. So we've added those in because we need to responsibly budget for them. So your base tuition is three hundred five thousand dollars. That's what that's what is going to cost us in tuition. We've added special education. Again, that's a snapshot in time, taking the existing fifth grade and, and trying to project what those needs would be. Uh, and then the transportation cost of $71,000, that's to add an additional bus. Uh, we've got a, a, a pretty good deal with first student right now because we're, we are combining routes, if you will, using uh, one bus for the elementary and middle run and the high school run. So with that combination, we've got a, a, a pretty good deal. But if we need to add an additional bus with an additional driver from scratch, it's going to cost about $71,000. So you can see the increase is about $435,000. We also looked at projected savings. And the savings, your, your, your cost for the building is not going to change. You still need even a, a building administration. You still need a librarian, a nurse, and, and all of the overhead, so that piece really isn't going to adjust by, by taking out 27, 25 students. Uh, but there is going, we did project a reduction of a classroom teacher. Uh, obviously, if we lose one grade level of students, we, we don't, uh, we can reduce by one teacher and also one paraprofessional. So we figured those in as, as reductions, responsible reductions. So you can see that's how we arrived at the figure of $326,000 of the Warren article that we need. So that would be obviously an increase that would, that would be ongoing thereafter because we're not going to do this for one year. If it, if it happens, um, my recommendation would be that it stay there, which means it's an ongoing expense. Now I know that, that there has been some discussion about um, if the students stay, it, it, you know, our per pupil cost of, of Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen thousand um, dollars. That 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 money could be utilized to pay that tuition, so we'd be saving money. Like I said, it doesn't work that way because that per pupil is figured on your overhead, your administrative costs, your collective bargaining agreement, the staffing that you have, uh, heat, oil, electricity. All of those things um, really don't change. So. Um, it would be a necessary increase of $326,000. So with, with that, that's the, the brief overview of all of our Warren articles, and uh, I'll turn it back over to the Budget Committee, and we're, we're glad to take any questions if, if you or anybody has. I'll get up here because there's no microphone. have a question or a comment, just throw up the microphone uh, and state your name and where you live and then um, state a question and, and we'll respond for you. Hi, Nancy Day on 44 Rollins Road. Now on the original transportation budget, is that for the five buses or does that include special ed also? Are you talking about the increase? No, I'm, talk I'm talking about 
the total transportation that you have on one of your slides. It's both regular ed and special ed. So how much is the per cost? How much is the per cost per class? Because the way it equals out, if you just do the five buses, it's only $65,000. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because in, in, in talking to the bus company, we're getting a good deal right now. The way, the, the, way the contract was set a couple of years ago, uh, we're almost getting an extra run or a half a run because we've combined utilizing the same bus for multiple runs. So it's not, we're not adding, for the way the contract is presently set up, we're using one bus and one driver for multiple runs at multiple levels. So because of that, we're getting a good deal in that. So when we renegotiate our contract, I fully expect that some of that is going to be an increase because we're, we're like I said, we're getting a good deal, we're doubling up on some of the runs. So, if we add a standalone bus, and I asked the bus company this, if we ask, add a standalone bus with a, a new bus, a new driver, a standalone route, that's where the $71,000 comes from. So we still wouldn't be combining like we are now with the five buses? We could look at that. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to, like we do every year for bus runs, we have to look at the number of students, the mileage that we have to do, so where they're located in town, I mean, that's always a balancing act because some people will say, you know, our, our buses aren't full, we can, we can put our students on, but we can't have students on the bus for, you know, an hour, hour and a half going around town. So that will be looked at, but responsibly, we need to budget for that to make sure in case we, we need all of that. All right, I was just curious because it only comes up to $65,000. Right. add a little bit more information. When Dr. Gadalti says we have a good deal right now, we do. Because it was five years ago when we actually started sending students to Marshwood, we had already signed a five-year contract. The bus company very generously, the school board's been grateful for this all along, uh, said we're not going to charge you more. This is your contract. And even though we have to add the two, two buses, we have to add two buses to go back and forth to Marshwood, um, we are going to honor the contract. So they have been very generous with us. So is the contract up this year, or is it in the one that the, that we're looking at now? We, we, the one you're looking at now, we've got one more year, which is this budget that we're presenting today. Okay, thank so you. So that means, we, that, like I said, we go out to bid this coming year for the 21-22 school year. Um, 
the ventilation plan, is that, has that been bidded out? That's just the plans, that's not even any work. You're estimating $50,000 for plans? That, that's, for, that's for doing the study, drawing the plans, uh, doing a kind of course of action. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And was that, did you get an estimate from a particular company? Or we it haven't bid it out yet because we don't have the money yet. Okay, so you have a guess. it's a guess? Yes. Okay. An educated guess. Okay. Um, so last year our operating budget was five million five hundred forty-two thousand twenty-three dollars. Um, this year we're at five point seven ish, um, which is closer. It's about one hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars increase in operating costs. Um, can you talk a little bit about where that's going? Like, what are, what are we using those funds for? Well, I, I think that if, if you if you look at the entire budget as a as a whole, uh, the slides that were just you know presented, that there's there's uh, collective bargaining agreements, there's contractual agreements, there's heat oil utilities, there's there's the bus uh, contract that, that is increasing. Uh, there's any number of maintenance projects. I mean, I I think that we tried to detail it out to give everybody as much information as possible about where that's that's going to be extended. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's just because the net increase in operating budget year over year is close, is, it looks like 19000 but it's really more like 178000 Is that correct? Yes. Well, you've got, you've got your, again, you've got your, uh, and Katie can help me out, the $97,000 that, that were loaded into the Warren articles needs to be accounted for right. year to year. So, yep. I mean, that's a piece of it as well. Right. And that's always a problem I've had with the operating budget, the way it's presented, is that the Warren articles become part of the operating budget, and they never come back out. And when we see a decrease, it's not a true decrease in the operating cost, because the Warren articles went there. Um, so, last um, question for you. So, in five years ago, we were at 5.2 million, um, and now we're at 5.7 million. Um, so, a half million dollars over five years is a lot of money. Can you talk a little bit about where where we're investing that? Where we've invested that half million in the last five years? Well, I can I can give you a, a brief answer. I mean, it wasn't here five years ago, um, but. Annually, I think that the, the, my guess is, and again, I'm in here, uh, that the board and the superintendent have gone over any kind of increases and in, in where that money has gone. I mean, it, it, it's, there have been cost of living increases, fuel, uh, electricity, all of those things that, you know, I think that our, our own private budgets uh, have inched up over the last five years as well. So, um, I would say tuition as well as a huge piece of budget, the tuition for Marshwood or Summersworth, whenever you can have those tuitions, that, that's an increase every year as well. I mean, that's always the X factor with, with a school district that tuitions students out, is, is that you've got a large portion of your budget that, uh, you know, you may have minimal control over as, as far as that tuition going up as well. I mean, that's, that's a good chunk of your budget. I'll have that in the annual report. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just a little concerned that, you know, in less than three years, if we continue to progress this way, we're going to get $6 million. Um, and our enrollment really hasn't changed. So I would hope that the budget committee takes a close look at where our increases are going. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just also like to point out that we also have made some significant investments in this building. Sure. Uh, sorry. So I would like to also point out that we've made some significant investments in the building throughout the years as well. So the, like... Um, Mr. Gom Dr. Gomsky was saying earlier, we have the cupola, the new stairs, we've done lots of the parking area. So while a lot of that has gone into education, we've also been reinvesting into this building to, to maintain it. Thank you. The other piece of that that I might comment on is, is, is the board and the administration is very cognizant of, of that fact. Um, and as you see last year, this past year, not only did the, the board get ahead on some of the building maintenance and projects, but there was a pretty good sum of money that was turned back to the town at the reduced taxes as well. So, you know, I think that every penny that the community is, is kind enough to trust us with, we've been very responsible in how it's being utilized. And if there are any particular areas as we get into the year that, that we can um, save on, I, I think the history has shown that, that we're doing that. I, I just want to follow up. So, um, so, you know, knowing that you've been investing in the building, um, when I 
see that there's a line item that really has kind of gone from maybe 100,000 to close to 300,000, and that you're using that for the building. Do you expect that to ever kind of level off and stop growing, or are we going to continue to see $100,000 increases year over year um, in the operating budget in order to maintain the building? Um, my expectation would be that that will, um, will decrease and, and level out, um, mostly because a lot of the things that we've been doing have been um, have been kind of the big ticket items, like retiling hallways, for example, so that they will last us another, you know, 75 years. Um, and that also reduces our maintenance costs on those floors. Redoing the cupola, hopefully that will never have to be done in my lifetime. Again, the stairs, um, the parking. So, you know, parking, we will not have to redo the whole lot. Again, we may have to, you know, resurface it as opposed to that. So I expect that those maintenance costs will go down and be more maintenance as opposed to <coughs> complete uh, renovations. And also, if you, if you look at your own uh, private homes, uh, over time, you know, you, you need a new roof, you need new windows, you need a new furnace. I, I mean, those are, are ticket items that, that happen everywhere. And uh, what, I've, what I've found over the years is that uh, a little bit of uh, maintenance, uh, although expensive, saves on the back end. And if, if you're maintaining things that might last 10, 15, or 20 years, uh, that's a lot cheaper than the cost of replacing those things in full 10 years from now, five years from now. So hopefully that will, that will ultimately help the expenses. Yeah, I'm sorry, just a follow-up to that. So it used to be we had more articles for, for this stuff, but now it's all built into the budget. Can you tell me what made you go this direction versus doing more articles? So um, I think, you know, we, we will likely still do more articles for some of those larger, you know, I, I, larger ticket items. Um, I think that, you know, we just have discussions around the, the board and, and determine whether we think something elevates to the level of, of a warrant article. Um, this, these items, I think we feel like are, are necessary, first of all, like the ventilation system, the air in the school is not, um, is, is, is not good for the students. So we feel like that's something that is really needed to be um, part of the operating budget so that we can move those projects forward. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and can I also just point out, this is one of the reasons that we have um, created this capital improvements um, fund that we have. So we have 250, maybe, somewhere around $250,000 right now in the capital improvements fund. So that when we get these large ticket items, like Mr. Dr. Galaxy was saying, if we need to replace the roof, if we need to replace the boilers, we will have a fund to tap into for that, and we won't have to put a warrant article on um, so that we can kind of defray some of those tax responsibilities from the town. I have just a comment also about the group. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about some of these uh, things that we're doing, some of the projects, maintenance, um, you know, we, we try to prioritize what needs to be done. We triage. Stuff. And there are a lot of things that uh, are brought to our attention that will require uh, immediate attention. The other thing, though, is um, we've seen in some cases with the town, it's not always a good idea to put things off because, well, next year it's not going to be a lot cheaper. So we're always trying to keep that in mind as well. Uh, and we're very uh, cognizant of, you know, the, the town's appetite to pay for some of these larger projects. And I think having the warrants gives everybody an opportunity to say, this is something we want to do. Um, maybe not this year, but at least we're putting it before the town. This is really, when the larger ticket items, we are very, very aware of uh, you know, spending those hours. But we, we think it out. We make sure that we have we have very robust discussions on these things. We don't always agree, um, but our priority is, is having a safe school. We want to make sure these kids are safe, that uh, you know, we're not having things falling from the ceiling, um, issues with broken tiles. 
Uh, as you can see from the building today, um, that you came into, the floor looks great. Um, out there looks excellent. The, uh, in the main building as well, we've done a lot of work. Um, but unfortunately, things cost money. But by paying for that, the, uh, these things should last well past all of our lifetime. I'd just like to qualify something I just said, which was that we wouldn't have to put a warrant article in. To, to remove money from our capital improvements fund, we would need to put a warrant article in. That would be something that was voted on by the taxpayers. However, it would not affect, it would not have a tax impact on you, just to be clear. Thank you, please. <laughs> Will you be making a comment? Yes, I got a comment. And, and also, a lot of these projects are done. Charlie, one second. Are you making a comment as the budget committee or as a, as a citizen? Not the budget committee, so I'll make it as a budget committee. Okay, thanks. I want to do uh, it. Uh, no, a lot of these repairs are also done with surplus money each year, not warrant articles. So they have extra money and they find a way of spending it. That's how a lot of these repairs are being done. I'm not saying they're not needed, but they're just being done that way. I'm speaking, I guess, as, as a person a citizen, but, but um, I can speak loudly enough, I believe. One of the things that, I, that happened this year, I mean, you saw it in your tax bill in December, and that is a decrease in the tax rate. That came solely from the amount of money that the school district returned to the town. So, to me, that shows the responsibility, how responsibly the school district is managing the funds that we have given them. So they have done all of the things that they've done to the building, has, has been uh, outlined for us today, and uh, responsibly dealt with education for all of the students in our town, and were able to return money to the uh, to the fund balance such that our tax rate was reduced this year. Does anybody else have any questions or comments that they'd like to raise? Hearing none, um, I will declare this hearing closed. Um, and in a few minutes, probably no sooner than 10 o'clock, we will open our uh, budget committee meeting where we will deliberate uh, the school district budget and 